Recently, there's been a lot of talk about AI completely replacing software engineers, and honestly, I have my doubts. To me, it seems like a narrative pushed by AI companies that are trying to sell you a product, and software engineering talent is still in demand, and sometimes I would argue even more so. But in a twist that I never saw coming, AI is actually making it harder for these same employers to find great software engineers. Let me tell you a story of how AI is ruining the interview process for a small startup and for huge tech companies. A brand new Eastern European startup raised its first 2.5 million in seeding, which is a crazy accomplishment. And at the time, it was just two people working at it. So they were ready to expand and hire their first engineers. They decided to start a LinkedIn account and straight away, they get a message from a qualified engineer, which really excites them. Not even a job posting needed. He's a senior software engineer with nine plus years of experience based out of Poland, knowing languages like JavaScript, TypeScript, Python. He's got a really impressive resume with years of experience, so obviously he gets passed on to the next round. This round was a screening round, kind of like an HR interview. The only red flags were the fact that he claimed to have gone to Warsaw University in Poland, but spoke no Polish and didn't have the typical Eastern European accent and Instead, he sounded like he had an Asian accent while speaking English. But those red flags can be overlooked for such a quality engineer, so he gets passed on to the next round. In this round, it was with one of the founders, and it was to go over his years of experience and see if he was a great candidate for the role. And everything went well again. The only slight issue was that his English wasn't that great, but honestly, as a software engineer, the main thing you have to know is how to code. Now he's at the technical interview, one of the most important for software engineers, and and guess what? He does extremely well. This man was a serious engineer. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And there was only one round left until he gets a complete offer. This final interview was with the second co-founder and once again was going through the background of this candidate. But as the candidate dug deeper and deeper into their background, this co-founder started to get suspicious. She started to question whether this person was actually telling the truth. This candidate's story started to fall apart and it was becoming a major red flag that they weren't who they say they were. And this man who had passed through every stage of the interview, the man that she was looking at right now was using an AI filter to try to trick them and had made up an entire background just to get this job. And obviously the second co-founder tells everyone and they completely canceled the offer. Even after this entire fiasco, they are still in desperate need of another software engineer, so they decide to go a more traditional route and create a job posting on LinkedIn. But now they're a little bit more cautious going through the process and get a flood of engineers applying, and now they find a great looking candidate. He's a Serbian developer with nine plus years of experience working at famous companies like HubSpot and Woosh. So he gets put into the interview gauntlet and starts off with the first round screening. And right off the bat, something is off once again. This man doesn't have the standard Eastern European accent again. Instead, he does sound Asian. And even though he claimed he's from Serbia, he doesn't speak any Serbian. So some red flags start going off at this company. Even with those red flags that they now saw, they decide to pass him on to the next round. In this round, with the CEO, they were a lot more cautious. And when this man got on camera, huge alarm bells start to go off. First off, he did not look like his picture on LinkedIn at all. And finally, the thing that made it so obvious, the interviewer, the C co-founder of this company, asked the candidate to put his hand in front of his face, a clear way to indicate that you are not using a filter. However, the candidate refused to do so. Your avatar is like kind of weird. Like, are you using something to like change your camera view? Uh, can you take your hand and put it like in front of your face to like cover it partially? No, no, it's not a joke because I can see that you're using some kind of software.
If you don't do it, we'll end the conversation right now. Okay, thank you. No, no, like pu put it like this in front of your face. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. And as you can see, every time he raises his hand to the camera, there's a distortion around it, showing that it is a clearly fake filter. Turns out the filter he was using was of a Polish politician. Obviously, the company cancels the interview right then and there, and this candidate is dropped. And even more suspiciously, and most likely, this second candidate was probably the first guy too, since it seemed like in the interview process, he knew what the questions would be, so answered even more confidently than the first time. So it was most likely the same guy trying to get the job twice. You might be thinking like, how does this relate to me? This happened at a small startup in Eastern Europe. I'd argue that this problem is even worse for big companies, especially Fang, since those positions are extremely desirable. And if you're a senior engineer at these companies, you might actually run across something like this, if not something similar. And as AI gets better, it'll be even harder to tell if it's a filter or if it's a real person. We don't really know the intentions of this fake engineer. I'd like to put up the three biggest reasons I think someone might do this and you might disagree. First, they could be a software engineer in a lower paying country and want to work at these higher paying western countries so they decide to fake their identity to hope in the hopes of getting a job. Second reason, and I don't think it's true for this case but for other cases it could be true, is someone paid another developer to fake being them and take the interview process in hopes of securing a job. The final reason someone might go through this process is to get into companies and leak their secrets. This is more likely at bank than small startups, but it is a high, high risk that can happen. And honestly, I don't know what this guy's plan was after he got the job. I don't know if he'll have to pretend, get fake IDs and try to live this fake lifestyle this entire time but it is a crazy experience. Though I have to admit, this example is a little bit more niche. Not as many candidates are gonna fake it this hard using filters and everything trying to fool you. However, there are little individual AI pieces that this candidate probably used that I have heard huge complaints about when recruiting engineers. Right now, job postings are being flooded by AI resumes that are perfectly tailored to the job description. These AI resumes are so good, they pass through most automated checks and put enough keywords and enough data into the resume that make them seem like perfect candidates, making it nearly impossible to sift through all of these resumes. Not only that, some of these AI resume builders are so advanced, they auto apply to jobs they find for you. You provide them a little bit of a description of your past experiences, your skill sets, then they will generate entire resumes specifically for certain job listings that they themselves find and then auto apply. And let's say you want to weed out software engineers with a technical interview, whether that be through hacker rank and some email, or if you're going to do it right camera to camera, face to face, sharing their screen. Well, now there's AI that will solve this technical interview question for the candidate and not be detectable by screen recording devices or any other detection system. And even if you're just reading the question out loud and the candidate can't copy and paste the question, this AI software can still dictate and translate your voice and then solve the question after. So AI is completely turning the interview process on its head. But I wouldn't be feeling too bad for companies just yet. Well, I don't think startups like this one or other mom and pop software engineering shops deserve this flood of AI that they don't even know how to deal with. Large companies, especially those that are pushing AI like Google, Anthropic, and OpenAI should not be complaining. This is a problem that they themselves have created. One of the most ironic things that I have seen in a while is on the Anthropic application when you try to apply for a software engineering role. It says, while we encourage people to use AI systems during their role to help them work faster and more effectively, please do not use AI assistance during the application process. 
I just think that is such a funny thing to ask. They're pretty much saying, you know that tool that we built that is really great at applying at resumes and that have flooded other companies with thousands and thousands of applicants and resumes specifically catered for roles? Yeah, can you guys please not use that tool at our resumes or applying for our jobs, please, pretty please? And remember, this ask is coming from a company whose partial mission is to get rid of software engineering or at least completely decrease the need of software engineers to a small fraction and have most code written by AI. The only thing, sadly, as engineers, we're going to be negatively impacted by this huge flood of AI applications. Most likely, the solution that companies will come to is we have to do in-person interviews and you have to go back to the classic whiteboard style and no more online interviews or if not the entire process at least the final round will be in person though hopefully this gives you a little bit of solace that software engineers aren't the only ones affected by ai these companies that are developing them also don't really know what they're doing and have, are having issues controlling what they have created. And before the Polish AI droids come and take me away, I hope you like and subscribe this video if you enjoyed it and thank you for watching.